So we have an amazing privilege tonight. Maestro Manfred Honeck of the Pittsburgh Symphony, music director of the Pittsburgh Symphony, is with us tonight. Wonderful to see you. And he's also invited uh, Chris Wu, a member of the violin section, uh, to join him on stage. We got just a tiny taste of what you do, uh, what you and your fellow musicians do, and we have just a few moments to talk about it. And I, I wanted to begin with this. Um, we've had all kinds of music already tonight in this hall. One thing we haven't had is orchestral music. And that's what you've given your life to. Could you uh, help us understand what is it uniquely about orchestral music that can't happen any other way? What's the unique contribution of the orchestra to the flourishing of music? First of all, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pleased that I can talk to you. As you see, my accent is from Austria, so I apologize for my bad English. So, first of all, um, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> there are so many, many kinds questions. of music in the world, so many kinds yes. of music, but okay. what is it that the orchestra can do? Yes. But well, no other? you know, um, as a conductor, you have a lot of people in front of you, and it is so wonderful. Sometimes, as a conductor, as you saw in the video, this, by the way, was the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra on tour in Berlin in a Philharmonie. And uh, you can give signs to the orchestra. First violin, play a little bit more or less because the trombone has to say something. Or the clarinet, please play a little bit less because the flute has something to say. Isn't it life, like in a family? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. As a father, they, sometimes they ask me, don't talk too much, so that's it. Because everybody has to say something. It needs a lot of um, uh, humility. I think huh. that it's very important, as a, especially as a, what we learn as a Christian always, step back, let other people have more to say. That's huh. what we do. We make music, and when we do live music, it's so wonderful, because you have humans in front of you. If you do put your a CD in the, in the machine, you have a, a product which was made one time in a day in a in, in certain year, and it's always the same. But when I conduct life, mm. the people respond differently. Mm. They can be angry mm. at me, <laughs> or they can be happy. Everything mm. happens in the moment. And it's sometime, somehow a creative process. It was a long answer, isn't it, Andy? That's perfect. But, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little more about that process, that creative process, because one of the things I wanted to ask you, you know, I just tried to make the case that we human beings are here to take the good world and make it very good, and sometimes even approach some kind of glory. But that takes work. So I'm wondering, what is the work that you have to do with your orchestra uh, to take, uh, these are all obviously very talented people, but how do you, what do you have to do to take it from, you know, very good to very, very good? <laughs> from good, good music to great music. Well, it is, um, these musicians, as you see here, from Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, they're fantastic music. Within two days, you have to um, create a symphony. It would not be possible if they would not be able to read the music in one, not one second, lo less than that. Every note they can read and translate, they can play the music. Um, so when I come to the first rehearsal, it is not that I have to tell them, play this, please, in time and these things. <laughs> no, I'm interested more how you play it. Uh, it's the way how you deal with people. It's the same thing, you know. Uh, you can be saying, you have to play better. Mm. They will be, oh, no, the maestro is doing something, you know. <laughs> or you say, might you play a little bit more dolce, more beautiful? <laughs> then you get a smile and it's, you hear this in the, um, in, the, in, a, in a concert. So my work is the expression. I want the people to play really like the music asked for. If it's, if it's um, a beautiful music, play it more beautiful as usual. 
if it's, if it's sad music, play more sad as well. Uh -huh. So because I mean, this, this is um, a thing what we want to give as orchestral musicians to the audience, that you feel um, emotions, emotions and emotions. I'm hearing then a sense of intensifying, of discovering what's there and taking it as deep as it can go, whether it's beauty or sadness or whatever. You're kind of trying to press more deeply into the full expression of that. Definitely, and you express it with the Bach wonderfully, what kind of quality in the music. It's actually the music asks for that, you know. And mm -hmm. as a conductor, you have the possibility to create certain atmospheres. You know? And you turn and you have um, 100 people in front of you, sometimes the percussions or the brass, the trombones might be sometimes a little bit loud. It's in the nature of the <laughs> instrument. Yes, yes, yes. So you have to protect the colleagues from the violins. Don't play them loud, <laughs> otherwise they have, have to go to the hospital. So, <laughs> so as a conductor you have a lot of responsibility, but just to make music in front of for them, with them, is just wonderful. I heard something quite remarkable from Chris uh, earlier, and also from another colleague of yours, uh, Anne, who plays, I think, in the cello section, that you have begun uh, offering to lead a time of prayer with anyone who would like before uh, every concert. Uh, could you just describe how that, how did you come to do that? I assume this doesn't happen in every symphony, uh, I'm guessing. And how did that come to be part of what you do? And, and what difference has it made, if any, uh, for you and for your musicians? Well, I must say, I always pray before the concert, like the football players. And man, <laughs> they, of course, isn't it? <laughs> Big game, but, but and uh, they, yeah. they get paid more actually. So, so for that, <laughs> that's the only difference. <laughs> but it is so wonderful just to say thanks for for everything what I can do in my life, and then give this music in the hands of God and let it be like it is, you know, with these wonderful musicians. And when I conducted the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, some people like Chris, and Chris can probably explain this a little bit better than me. Um, they asked me, can we pray before the concert? I said, of course, I do it always. Please join me. And now we have sometimes up to 30, 50 people in my suite. And they come to me and pray. It's such a joy. Isn't wow. it, Chris? Absolutely. Uh, it's one of the great joys. In fact, after we pray, Manfred often says, okay, we don't have to play the concert now. We can all go <laughs> home because we've said our prayer. But... Um, We've never experienced it here before, but uh, Manfred has brought such a wonderful leadership and praying certainly is at the center of it. And um, we sort of, like Manfred said, started when we saw the football players kneeling down um, when they're on the 50 yard line after games. Right. And we sort of took that to, a, to another level. And we would love to see you guys. I mean, we might have to get a bigger concert hall if you all came and prayed with us before a concert, <laughs> but come to a concert and enjoy the prayer and then enjoy the music afterwards. Wow. Thank you so much for being here and giving us this little glimpse of what you're doing. Thank you. Have Thank a you. wonderful time. Thank, Thank you so much.